The purpose of this section is to teach you more advanced techniques about functions. In this video, I will show you how MATLAB separates variables into separate workspaces for each function that you call. This and the following video uses a function called basic stats, which we created in a video called creating functions. If you don't have that function because you didn't watch that video, then I recommend first going through that video before continuing to this one. Before switching to MATLAB, I want to explain conceptually how MATLAB deals with multiple workspaces when running functions. Think of MATLAB's memory buffer as being like a little self-contained universe. All of the variables that you create exist inside this little universe, or miniverse, as I like to call it. The base miniverse is the default MATLAB miniverse when you start MATLAB. When you call a function, MATLAB will create a new miniverse just for that function. That little miniverse is completely independent of the base universe, meaning that variables are not shared between the two miniverses, just like you cannot send emails to your doppelganger in a parallel universe. Well, actually, this is not totally the case. MATLAB is a little bit more like a cheesy sci-fi movie. It is possible to get information into and out of miniverses. There are functions like eval in and assign in. There are persistent or global variables, but I'm not going to talk about these topics here. The main way to get information into and out of these miniverses is through function inputs and function outputs. And if the function that you are working in calls another function, then MATLAB creates a new miniverse for that function. Maybe we'll call that a teenyverse. And the thing is that all of these miniverses are independent of each other, and information is sent across these miniverses primarily through function inputs and function outputs. When the function ends, then that miniverse is destroyed, and so is anything that existed inside that miniverse, including variables, settings, parameters, and so on. So that's the conceptual idea. MATLAB doesn't actually call these miniverses or teenyverses, unfortunately. The official term is stack or workspace. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate this concept to you. And I'm going to show you how to go inside these other miniverses using a procedure called stepping in. As I mentioned, we're going to work with the basic stats function. What I'm going to do is step into that function so I can see its miniverse. First, I'm going to create a few variables in the base workspace in order to see the comparison. So let's say x equals 2, y equals 3, and z equals 4. So now I have a couple of variables in the base workspace. And now in the basic stats function, I'm going to add a breakpoint, which will allow me to step into that function. You can add a breakpoint by clicking on this little horizontal line that's next to the line numbers. You can only set a breakpoint on lines with code. And the idea is that when MATLAB gets in the function to this line, it will stop and it will allow us to go inside this function, to step into the function at this line, but it won't actually run this line. So MATLAB will stop here before running this line. And now I'm going to run this function, basic stats, let's say one through five. Notice what happened. The prompt changed to a K and MATLAB placed the cursor on this line inside the function. And now if I type whose, I no longer see the variables x, y, and z, which I created up here. And instead, I see the variables that exist only inside this function, including invar, which is the main input, my mean, which is created here, and my sum, which is created here. I don't yet see my standard deviation because that variable has not yet been created. So now I've traveled inside this function's miniverse. Don't worry, the base workspace is still there. I can get back to the base workspace by clicking on editor and function call stack. And here you see it's selected to basic stats and now I can select base. And now I can type whose again. And now I see the variables that I created in the base workspace and I no longer see the variables that exist 
only inside this function's miniverse. There are three ways that you can leave a function's workspace. You can click on Editor and quit debugging. You can type in the command window db quit. Or you can make a change to the function. Notice that when I edited the function, this breakpoint turned from red to gray. And now if I save the file, I will also exit the debugging mode. This latter method is not always possible or a good idea because this might be a MATLAB function and you might not have write privileges. Now I'm going to remove this breakpoint by clicking on it again. Now to illustrate the Teenyverse, I'm going to create a new sub-function inside this function. So I'll replace this mean function with my own mean function. Let's call it my mean. Down here at the bottom of this function, I will write the new function y equals my mean x. To compute the mean, we want to sum over the values of x and divide by the number of elements in x. This is a valid function, but it's a subfunction of this larger function. So MATLAB doesn't recognize this function except inside this miniverse. You can see this by typing my mean in the command window and MATLAB throws an error because it thinks that I've misspelled the mean function. On the other hand, rerunning basic stats shows that the function runs properly without producing any errors, indicating that the function was indeed able to see and use this my mean function. I would also like to point out that my mean is actually not a good name for this subfunction because it's very, very similar to the name of the variable, my mean. They differ only by a capital letter. This is something that MATLAB will have no problem distinguishing, but a human being could potentially get confused. Now I'm going to put a breakpoint inside this subfunction and run basic stats again. Now if I type whose, I see only one variable in the workspace which is this variable x, the input variable. And now by clicking on editor and basic stats, I can see the variables that exist inside basic stats. And then again, going back to base, now I can see the variables inside the base miniverse. Another thing I would like to point out here is that variable names can change as you go from one function to another function. MATLAB doesn't care about the name of the variable as you input functions. It cares only about their position in the function inside the parenthesis. So far, I've shown how to step into functions by using breakpoints at some point that you specify because you want to have the breakpoint there. There are two other methods for stepping into functions that I'd like to discuss. One is by clicking on Editor and breakpoints and stop on errors. This means that MATLAB will automatically step into a function when it detects an error, even if you don't explicitly set a breakpoint. Let's see an example of this. First, I will quit debugging mode. I'm going to change the code so that this function will produce an error. I will change the lowercase v to a capital V and save the file. Notice that there are no breakpoints anywhere in this file. Now I can run the basic stats function again. And now MATLAB will step into this function at the line that produces an error, in addition to telling me what the error message is. So this is a really useful tool for debugging. So now I'm going to undo this, save, and we're back to normal. Sometimes you need to step into a function because it's doing something weird and unexpected, but not necessarily giving you an error. In this case, you can use a conditional breakpoint. So let's say that you get 
NaN, not a number, for the sum. And you don't know why you get NaN. Having an NaN is not something that will produce a MATLAB error, but it is an unexpected result and worth investigating. So I'm going to add a breakpoint here after the mySum variable is created. Right-click on the breakpoint and set or modify condition. And now here I'm going to type not is finite my sum. So is finite is a function that will test whether the input is finite. If my sum is nan or infinite, then this will return false, meaning that when we negate it with a tilde, it will be true. Notice that the breakpoint has become yellow. That indicates that we have a conditional breakpoint. Now I can run the basic stats function again with normal uh, numeric input and nothing happens. We don't step into the function, but I can change the input to include NAN. And now notice that MATLAB stepped into this function because the conditional on this breakpoint was satisfied because my sum is NAN. This is one way to add a conditional breakpoint. You can achieve the same results, but more permanently by writing this conditional breakpoint into the code itself. The way I like to do this, and now I'm getting rid of this conditional breakpoint. The way I like to do this is to say, if not is finite my sum, okay, so what am I doing here? Now I test whether uh, this variable is, is uh, not a finite number. If this is true, if this conditional is true, then that means that my sum is NaN or infinite, and then this will uh, get run. Now I don't actually care about this variable. I mean, I do like chocolate, but I don't actually care about this variable. It, it has no purpose in this function. However, I'm going to use this to check uh, a breakpoint to indicate a breakpoint here. So again, if I input normal numeric uh, values, then nothing happens. And nothing happens, we don't step into the function because this conditional is false. So this line of code doesn't get run. However, if I specify an NAN in the input, we do step into the function because uh, this conditional is true, so this line gets run and then the breakpoint gets activated. I prefer this method over the previous conditional breakpoint method because the conditional when you click here, this will disappear when you close the MATLAB session. However, leaving a, a possible conditional like this will remain for all future MATLAB sessions even when the breakpoints are gone. It's also easier to see exactly what the conditional is whereas setting the conditional this way leaves it hidden. So in this video, I introduce you to the concept of stacks or workspaces in MATLAB. I also showed you several ways to step into a function. Stepping into functions is really useful for debugging, but it's also really useful for understanding how MATLAB functions work and how to become a better MATLAB programmer. If you use a function and you want to know better how it works, what are the mechanics of the function, what's going on inside the black box, you can step into the function and run the code line by line. And studying MATLAB code this way will make you a better programmer.